Hi, I'm Antonio Sala, and in this video, we will present a fast review on the basic steps on Bayesian optimization methodology. If you are familiar with Gaussian processes and multivariate Gaussian computations, you will be able to follow it. If you are not, well, try to get a glimpse of the main ideas because the details on them will be expanded in subsequent videos for an actual in-depth understanding. So the basic Bayesian optimization methodology is setting up a prior with some mean function uncertainty bands and covariance encoding the smoothness of the function, the longest the distance in the abscissa axis in which covariance is high, the smoother the function will be. And then we get samples, we compute the posterior with some formula we will just review in a minute, and we decide via some statistical analysis which is the next sample to do, and we repeat and repeat until some termination criteria, either number of samples or certainty about the optimum points location are met. So, well, let us then briefly outline how to compute the posterior, actually based on the posterior conditional Gaussian formula in Wikipedia. But don't be ashamed of not understanding this, because, as I said, this is material in which a whole book can be written, so the basic goal of this video is just having a glimpse of the idea. So, let us go on how this posterior on these random functions is obtained, and then that posterior, if we assume, of course, normal distribution, Gaussian process, is obtained with the posterior conditional formulas for the normal distribution. These are the formulas, but first let us have a look at the clean version that we have in Wikipedia, like this. In the sense that if I have a multivariable normal in which I have some x1 points, which will be test points, and x2 which will be sample points, and I have a prior mean and a prior covariance matrix, then if I sample and I observe that x2 took a given value a, then it can be proved that the posterior mean and the posterior covariance matrix of my test points is given by this formula. Prior mean plus some covariance times inverse of information variance times the innovation, the difference on what I observed, minus the mean of the observed value variable 2 and this variance reduction due to the information I got. Prior was sigma 1, 1 and then Covariance times inverse of information variance times covariance transposed is the posterior variance. This is a well-known formula widely used in normal distributions. The detailed proof is elsewhere. And the thing is that if we now call my test points just I wish to obtain the value of random variable f of x for a given x, and my sample points, I observed the value of my random variables f of xm, measured points, let's say, well, just copying and pasting the same formula but changing notation, give me this posterior mean, my prior mean, plus covariance times inverse of the information variance times the innovation, measurement minus the mean value. And then it can be proved that, you know, the posterior covariance between two points has this formula. Details should be in other materials, but okay. 
if this is not new to you, you will understand that it's just changing notation from this Wikipedia formula on the normal multivariate distribution. And if this is absolutely new for you, then okay, just don't worry because this is just an outline and just get with the intuitive information on this plot. Close to observations, my uncertainty is reduced. And then after taking those observations, then I thought the minimum was in here with high likelihood, but in fact, my function was close to this one in more violet tone. So it seems that the actual optimum after these three observations seems to be likely here. So this is the basic idea on how we sample, we obtain a posterior, and then we do a statistical analysis on where the optimum could be. And to finish the video, we'll just discuss the basic ideas on this statistical analysis, which can be done in many different ways. We see here like five possible options, and each of them maybe would require a whole video to explain it, or more than one. But okay, grossly, we can think on in sampling this point, the point with better expected value, the posterior mean. We can think in sampling this point, the point with minimum lower confidence bound. We can think on computing for each abscissa point the so-called probability of improvement, in the sense that this is my current best, the minimum of the observations, then if I draw a horizontal line, let's say, then for instance, at this point, we have the Gaussian curve, let's say, and so the integral of the Gaussian in here will be the probability of improvement, higher probability of improving than, let's say, the point in here in which this part of the Gaussian is much smaller than this one. So this is the probability of improvement heuristics, or we can multiply each of these black points with actual probability of improving by the value and get the so-called expected improvement, expected value, lower confidence bound, probability of improvement, expected improvement. These are the kind of acronyms you get in the literature on Bayesian optimization, or we can directly measure in bits of entropy the information I gain by sampling at a given point. And those methodologies are variants of what they are called entropy search methods. So discussing the differences and the advantages and drawbacks and computational complexity of all these things is the core theoretical issue in Bayesian optimization. But of course, it requires much more than a 20 minute video. So let's summarize and conclude this video. We outlined the basic issues and methodology of Bayesian optimization, which is deciding from a prior on how my function to optimize may look, deciding how to sample, to acquire information, but just in order to avoid wasting samples, acquire information just in points where there is a high likelihood of the optimum being there. The basic methodology is sample computer posterior, which has this kind of shape and carry out some statistical analysis on the posterior to decide which will be the optimal next sample and repeat and repeat until we are fairly sure that we reached the optimum. The posterior is computed with this formula, posterior conditionals in Gaussian distributions and the statistical analysis has many options in literature, each of them striking a different balance between the exploration 
versus exploitation trade-off. But of course, details on all this would fill a whole course in Gaussian process for machine learning, which is not the goal of this series of short introductory videos. This introductory outline on what Bayesian optimization is will finish in the next video in which we will discuss which are the most sensible use cases for this Bayesian optimization techniques and we will give some last remarks on Bayesian versus deterministic methods. But okay, for brevity, for the moment being, we conclude here. Thanks for watching.